Hello, friends, and welcome back to the next episode of I'm Like Anime. So, a weekly anime talk show where we talk about the latest anime, weigh in, see what's hot, see what's not. My name's George, and with me, as always, is Tony. Tony! Whoa, coming in hot. Tony. <laughs> uh, Tony has been um, turned into a Pokemon by an evil wizard. Tony! Tony, 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 and... Tony. So I'm just going to have to ad-lib about, uh, so I'm a spider, so what? Because I'm not watching. Tony! <laughs> it was very Tony-rific. <laughs> I've, uh, I've, I drank some beer and now I'm cured. <laughs> oh, sweet. That's all it takes. Yeah, Pokemon can't drink beer. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's canon. Yeah. Okay. Pretty sure. I'll, I'll Pro- probably it. in the manga. Yep. I'll accept it. You're <laughs> never wrong about anything. <laughs> oh, we're going to get into that right away. <laughs> Well, no, no, that's, that's, that no, comes yeah, later. that's, that comes uh, that's not till, um, oh yeah, that's right. Because of the restructuring, it's not the first thing that we talk about. Huh. No, it is. The you being right thing. Oh, okay. I have no idea what that is. It's, it's mid, mid episode, this episode. Okay. Well, stay tuned for, uh, <laughs> the rare occasion of George landing <laughs> haphazardly on the correct answer. And Tony admitting that George is right. That's true. That's, that's the tougher. Yeah. That's the higher. I, well, goal. and uh, willingly, um, mm. even uh, without being prompted. Yeah, it's literally, it's in my notes. But you're probably just trying to beat me to the punch so I don't rub it in like I always George, do. George was right. That's <laughs> what it says right there. I wrote that. I like it. I, I want to get that framed. <laughs> All right. Shall we? Um, we shall, but before we do, we should talk about our schedule adjustment oh, that, that's right. we're, that we're doing. Um, so we've shaved enough shows off, uh, and honestly, our Friday episode always sort of underperformed on, uh, listens. So we're, we're cutting the Friday show and we're morphing it into this show, which needed a little bit more content. Um, and I think the only change to the Sunday release is that the, uh, uh, the special challenge has been moved to that. Um, so otherwise, uh, this episode is going to be all of the anime that airs from Wednesday through Saturday. And then uh, our Sunday episode will be everything that's Sunday through Tuesday, I guess. Yep. All right. So if you're, if you're online at you know 12 o'clock noon this Friday and you're like, where is the episode? Where is the episode? You're going to be waiting a couple of days. So... Just and you clearly away. didn't listen to the beginning of this one. Yeah, if, you, if, you, if you're not <laughs> listening right now, if you just skip past it because you want to hear about So I'm a Spider, So What? Um, well, you're going to be disappointed on Friday, maybe. This is or, true. Or maybe this is the only show that you listen to because it's the spider show and there's no spiders on Friday. Yeah, you don't care about any of this. Yeah. Well, uh, on that note. <laughs> on that note, <laughs> let's talk about Super Cub. Uh, we're on episode seven now, it looks like. Um, we are, yes. I uh, I have very, very um, succinct notes about this. Well, literally note, I suppose. One, um, Just a one note. Yep, yep. There wasn't, I didn't have a whole lot to say about it. So I, I think you have more than I do. So I'll let you go ahead and run sure. with it. Uh, yeah, I mean, just to run through it real quick. Um, super Cub is a show about a girl who has a Super Cub. It's like a little moped motorized scooter. And she's making friends along the way uh, and bonding with, uh, you know, all, all because of her super cub. And she's coming out of her shell slowly. Mm-hmm. And uh, this episode uh, um, continues that. This episode I thought was weird because it's like there's this whole cultural festival going on. Mm-hmm. But our main girls, Koguma and her, her friend Reiko, mm-hmm. um, you know, not really interested. They just want to go eat lunch on their cubs or, you know. <laughs> Uh, go glove shopping, um, but there's yeah. a scene where, and this is, becomes all a setup for the, uh, you know, the uh, um, previously unnamed third main character that yes, you see that in the see intro in the and the ending. Yeah, yeah. Um, she's kind of she's a short, uh, sweet, kind of mild mannered girl. Um, I don't remember her name. She has a name, and it is she. Oh, she. She. She who must not be yeah. named. Uh, her last name is Eniwa, apparently, but hmm. she is what they call her, I believe. Like S H I. I. Two eyes. Oh. She. She. Not she, but she. She. Yes. Who must not be named. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So that, I mean, and it didn't come off that way as initially, but one thing that amused me, because you kind of like, you know, as class is ending, 
you know, they're talking about the cultural festival and then this girl is like asking for volunteers uh, and uh, Koguma and Reiko are just like, eh, you know, we're good. Until there's like the next day or something and uh, and they overhear a conversation of the, the, you know, this group that's trying to organize the cultural festival. They're, uh, and I guess we should say, you know, they're, they're doing a French themed cafe, mm-hmm. uh, sort of thing, or Italian. Italian, I Italian? Yeah, okay. espresso and stuff, yeah. That's right. That's right. Um, but then they have they have some sort of issue uh, where they somebody bailed on them for transportation. Mm-hmm. They have to like go get all these supplies, a coffee machine, and a bunch of random other stuff, uh, yeah. and bring to the school from another school. And so and and so Reiko and Kogamo are like getting you know they're class is over and so they're getting their stuff together and they overhear this and they're still moseying on they're like all right you know good for you uh and then one of them uh you know suggests uh like oh what about like a you know like a a scooter or like a a A motorcycle yeah yeah something like that and somebody's like oh no you couldn't possibly uh... couldn't do that on a motorcycle (laughs) you crazy an espresso machine and a bunch of like plates and saucers and cups like fragile stuff yeah you know you couldn't do it can't be done. She's, she's not wrong. I think it was she that said you can't. Oh. Or maybe it was someone else that said that you can't do it. No, it wasn't she. Yeah, anyway, I don't remember exactly. Um, wh- whoever it was wasn't wrong in that regard that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It, you, you can't really. Yeah. So it's pretty reasonable to doubt that, you know, that would be a viable option. But once Kogama hears this, uh, she essentially does a hold my beer. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she, she gets all riled up. Yeah, and that that sort of relates to the one note I have about this is that uh, Kogama is becoming more assertive. Like it's definitely displayed in this episode in in many many instances. Like yeah. she's normally she wouldn't have even interjected herself into this conversation at all. So yeah, that's true. That and like her volunteering for it, and there's more later too. But yeah, yeah, and and I agree because I, I had a note about um, like she's still Kogama is still very awkward, but she is putting herself out there more. And she's actually speaking up, you know, instead yeah. of just, you know, remaining silent and, and not, you know, and non-confrontational. Um, but it's funny because she comes off as kind of a jerk. Like, she's, yeah, she's sure. very blunt. And I, and I think it's a real life thing, like for people who are, soci- who are socially awkward, uh, especially in uh, like high school, mm-hmm. uh, you know, that, that time where it's like you don't, you know, you're already shy and you're combating that and you don't mean to come off as harsh as you do, but uh, it's just, it is what it is. And like, cause I feel like she's like kind of just happy being able to do that and not really like aware. Um, mm. But the show definitely uh, kind of played into that. Um, but I guess that we get, we get to yeah, that. Even, I mean, even with Reiko, when like, when this conversation is happening, she's like, you still have that thing, right? Or something. Yeah. You know? And Reiko's like, yeah, before she knows what Koguma's going to do. And then, then Koguma goes and basically volunteers them to, uh, mm. to transport the uh, stuff that needs to be transported on their cubs, which yes. we just said it can't be done on motorcycles. So how are they doing it? <laughs> so yeah, they have this whole plan. It's whole, a whole like MacGyver like um, montage of them getting this contraption that goes on to one of their cubs and then like sort of uh, sort of crudely just tying a rope uh, around yeah, uh, this the, cart that they find. Yeah, the trailer thing was pretty uh, <laughs> questionable. <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay. Uh, but the, the other the other device they have kind of like actually bolts in um, yeah. to the back of the, the cub. And so. it was a thing that was made for, uh, I think Reiko says it, it was made for people that like transport ramen, like ramen delivery drivers oh, yes. and stuff. Yeah. So that the ramen wouldn't spill. So it's like a sort of, it's a suspended box that sort of mm. hangs off the back of the cub and has... Um, Lots of, uh, what do you call it? Suspension, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, something that Reiko just had because she's a cub nerd. Yes. Yeah. She is a cub <laughs> otaku. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, they assemble all that. But th- something that really got me, though, is like they, they go up to she and mm-hmm. they're kind of telling her like, hey, we got this whole thing set up. We feel really good about it. But just in case, we we also had the time to accumulate all these other uh, items and memorabilia for you to do a completely different themed uh, mm-hmm. festival, uh, American Saloon, which uh, which seemed uh, yeah. I took some offense to. <laughs> <laughs> in case in case it doesn't work out or something, basically, like we're gonna go out get all this stuff, but it might all be broken to pieces by the time we get back. You never know, so it's always good to have a backup plan, and that's sort of what they're telling her. I guess, and uh, yeah. <laughs> It just seems so like 
out of place because I could understand having the idea just being like hey like you know we feel confident about this but just in case maybe you know if this doesn't work out and we destroy everything <laughs> uh, maybe you could do this but the fact that they like gathered all this you know they had time I mean you could have already you know been on your way to go get the <laughs> yeah go get the stuff um, and it's never you know in this episode anyway is not brought up again but I guess it was just sort of a gag but I thought they focus on it a little too much. Like yeah. they went to great lengths. To... Again, it was sort of Koguma being a little more assertive and stuff because she's mm. the one that's saying all of this yeah. to her. Like she's like, "Hey, listen, little child person <laughs> who doesn't know any better. This you should have had a secondary plan for the from the get go. The fact that we have to go and rescue you." Like she was kind of a yeah. kind of a jerk about it. Yes. again, yeah, but, um, yeah, very blunt and yeah, and yeah, not very friendly like yeah, yeah or understanding even yeah it definitely seemed like she was sort of talking down to her a little bit although i didn't is are they all in the same class I, like it felt like the the relationship the way that they were talking to each other it felt like she was maybe a uh a younger like kohai of some sort you know that uh yeah i i wondered that too because i mean she was in their classroom, but yeah. it didn't necessarily show her like during actual class time. Yeah, so um, I was a little confused on on that, but I, I I think she is one of their classmates, or I'm not. I'm really not sure. Yeah, it's yeah, definitely seems like it. But she does seem she's much smaller in stature and yeah, it seems younger than they are. Yeah, but maybe she's just uh, even more shy than Koguma at this point. I, I don't know. Maybe. I mean, I know that they're the second years or third years or something, right? I think. I don't hmm. know. I don't remember. Anyway, continue. Yeah. I mean, just to wrap it up, they, uh, they, they go and do it, and uh, it's a success. And then... And then, well, the school that they go to is the school that Kogomo was doing her uh, delivery runs for uh, during the summer and stuff. So she kind of already knows the person there. So yeah. when they get there, she's like, just hang on, Reiko. Let me go. Let me go talk to my people. <laughs> <laughs> and she's still so like stern and serious and like I, that that teacher that she knows she with her summer job um she just she's like she's like oh you have your cub like how are you going to transport this and like instead of just explaining it to her she like grabs her by the arm and like makes her walk all yeah. the way out of the school down around the corner to where you know reiko's at with the cubs and then the teacher's like oh okay i get it now and she's like <laughs> well like i'll go back inside and get the stuff i guess and i'm like well you could have saved her a trip koguma like it's kind of rude <laughs> But once again, it plays into uh, her just being blunt, yeah. blunt, but yeah. also awkward and, yeah. and yeah, not knowing how to just communicate in a, you know, mm. clear and friendly fashion. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then after that, they kind of have, uh, you know, they, they bring, they transport the stuff back. It's all a success. They get it all set up for the cultural festival. I mean, they don't, but. They hand it yeah. over, and then uh, she, this uh, new character, um, wants to thank them, and so she brings them uh, coffee. I'm not mm -hmm. a coffee person. Yeah. Espresso. Some sort of, uh, well, whatever was it, it is. Was it a cappuccino? or an, uh, I don't remember what it was exactly, but yeah. Mm. She brings them some, some sort of coffee beverage. Yes. Espresso-based coffee beverage. And then, and there's something with the episode, like, it was, it was named, like, Aqua Blue or something. And Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember looking at the... I actually paused it on the, the end card that said mm. like the title of the, the episode because I wanted to read all of the kanji and like, because it seemed like a weird episode title. Did you figure anything out from it? Because I, 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 I did, but I... Well, I, I mean, I didn't really understand it, but I mean, there's a whole part where Koguma, um, like when she gets the mug, it's like kind of a lighter blue color. Mm. Um, and then at the end she goes um they finish their coffee and so koguma brings up the cups you know to return mm -hmm. them to the festival and then she sees she in this different light you know before she thought she was mm -hmm. just meek and you know yeah um and maybe maybe koguma was thinking like she was like better than her like as far as the you know social you know being confident and even though this is all very new to her but but anyway she kind of sees her in a new light like you know taking orders and you know taking charge and doing her thing mm -hmm. um and then she she like has a thought that like oh she, initially she reminded me of like a weaker shade of blue but now I think there's mm -hmm. more depth to it. Yeah, they uh, pale blue I think is what a the translation blue. says. But uh, the Japanese was uh, mizuiro uh, water colored. Oh, okay. So the color of water, which is sort of you know not really blue at all, you know. Mm. Um, or or do you think it could be like water colors? Like no, no, okay, no, the color of water. The color of water. Yeah. 
um, which is, yeah, very pale blue, like very just faintly blue because yeah. water we normally think of as clear. And the, the thing that she says at the, at the end um, that Koguma is saying about this girl that I thought was pale blue, but mm. it turns out to be, I forget what the other one is, um, the other color that she says, but yeah, sky blue. It's like, yeah, it's something like that. Yeah. yeah, sky blue or. Yeah. Anyway, so. Yeah, I don't know what blueness has to do with it or anything, but she just thought that she was sort of bland and colorless almost, you know, that's the mm. water colored part of it. And then, but she turned out to be more of an azure blue or whatever. And that's not what they say. But. Yeah. And I wonder too, because uh, when we get to uh, Odd Taxi, uh, which will be the next mm. episode, um, but they, that episode brings up uh, synesthesia. Oh, yeah. Which, um, uh, but to tie that into this, I wonder if that's what they're going for. Like, she mm. is kind of, I don't know, like, you know, is a bit odd and, you know, not like everyone else. So maybe she has like this sort of perception where she is seeing, you know, associating colors with, mm. with personalities or something. I don't know. I, it, seemed, it was like a new thing that they introduced. So yeah, it seemed kind I, of I, odd. I sort of wonder if it's a, uh, just a sort of Japanese thing where there's this sort of shorthand for personality types that is maybe related to different colors. I don't know. Yeah, that could be, yeah. Could be like a, yeah, an old, like an old, cultural thing that we just don't know about yeah well i mean we we there's certainly things that we do in english like you know uh something that's bland and boring and sort of tasteless i guess you say oh it's just a vanilla whatever mm, right yeah so maybe yeah maybe. It's something like that maybe um but i don't know for sure i'm not aware of that to uh, that contextual usage of the, the those words but uh but th that was my assumption was that it was maybe something like that that was uh, japanese um, mm. japanese people would know what it meant but yeah. We didn't really get it. <laughs> but uh but yeah, that's kinda that's the episode in a nutshell. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, put me in a nutshell, get me out of here. <laughs> um all right. So let's move on to uh so I'm a spider. So what? Um Kumo Deska Nanika, episode number nineteen. All right, so all right, so Kumiko is sort of becoming annoyed with the townsfolk worshipping her. Um oh, I yeah. think I think I sort of told you about it. Yeah. last time right um she tries to you know tell them like hey i'm not a god i don't control the weather because they're coming to her and saying oh the weather's so nice today thank you kumiko and stuff like that and uh i forget what they call her they don't call her kumiko but uh anyway um but yeah she is like sort of trying to explain it to them but she's a spider so we get to see like their point of view and she's just like shrieking and squeaking and stuff like that <laughs> They're like, oh, she's trying to tell us something, you know, like like you would. Anyway, a little comic relief there at the beginning. Nice. Um, so then, like, the next thing up is uh, the Elf King uh, pays a visit to Kumiko's village. He is the, I, I call him the Elf King. He's the leader of the, the Elf Clan or whatever. Um, so he comes to the village to speak to uh, the vampire baby's father, the vampire baby who we have seen a few times now. Um, and their conversation is, I don't know, it seems more like he's just there to sort of check out the baby um, for reasons that we're not 100% sure of just yet, but might, be become, might become more relevant later in the episode. Anyway, so back to Kumiko, she, uh, she senses that the demon lord is approaching, like she's got that, you know, spider sense, I guess. Um, <laughs> And to her, that immediately means, well, that means that the demon lord has left mother's side, meaning mother is alone, and mother has been weakened by her, you know, psychic forces that she sent to attack mother, right? So now is a prime opportunity to get rid of mother. So okay, she, finish her off. Yeah. So she teleports over to, uh, you know, kill mother. I actually have it written. She yeets over to kill mother. Because yeet. Yeet. It's, it's one of these, you know, young people language things. Oh, okay. Yeet. Hey, everyone, get in the comments. Tell George what yeet means. I'm old. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, she, she teleports over um, to, to finish Mother off. And uh, unfortunately for her, Mother was sort of expecting this and had laid webs, you know, really sticky webs all over the place. So she teleports in and basically immediately gets stuck in, uh, in Mother's webs. Um, so and, spiders uh, aren't immune to other webs. 
No, I mean, they can get stuck in their own webs, I guess, too. They okay. just have to know how to, you know, they know where their webs are so they can make their mm. way around them. But uh, anyway, okay. so she sort of gets wrapped up a little bit in uh, in Mother's Web. And, uh, and uh, yeah, she gets decapitated again and becomes just a severed head yet again. Um, because it's like mother, poetry. Yeah, Mother's just like, nope. Um, anyway, but now she's close enough to Mother that she can uh, use the psychic connection that she had to talk to her other brains her other minds that are currently in mother and have been attacking mother's soul okay this whole time because she couldn't do it before because of distance things i guess i'm not entirely sure that they huh. explained that but anyway so she's able to you know communicate with them and so two of the other brains return and they're like oh yeah the other one she jumped into the demon lord um anyway and all together the three of them combined they're able to you know use a bunch of magic power and kill mother so now mother's dead oh but kumiko is is just a head uh, a decapitated oh, still head just again. a head yeah i think maybe she levels up and and regrows a body or something i don't remember so actually. the other the other brains the other the other minds. brains are also just heads or they're like they're like a, a... they're just in her head they're they're oh, okay. mental uh yeah. projection sort of things they're different parts of her brain that sort of control different things like there's there's her as the main one and then when she at some point she got the ability to have multiple minds multiple brains multiple consciousnesses or something like that okay and she gets one that sort of handles the magic stuff so she's like doing the physical stuff and then she's got this other brain that does the magic stuff so that she can do two things at once it's sort of a multitasking thing huh she levels up that ability again and she gets a, a third one that uh, sort of controls her physical body and the other one controls the magic. So she's basically just doing the strategy stuff, I guess. And then she levels up again and gets another one that does some other magic stuff or something. So she's got, you know, like four brains. There's, there's Kumiko wow. and then there's the other three brains. It's not fair. I want to outsource my duties. Duties. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Anyway, yeah, so she, she regains two of the, the external brains that had been that she had sent through the psychic connection to Mother to attack Mother. But one of them, when the Demon Lord had made a psychic connection with Mother, traveled through and is now attacking the Demon Lord's soul, is how they refer to it. So okay. attacking, her, attacking her life points directly. The but Demon Lord that is? Was, that was a Yu-Gi-Oh reference. Oh. It doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> I never really watched it. I attack your life points directly. You know, after you've, never mind. <laughs> I was just going to explain how the card game works, and I realize it's really not that important to this spider episode. Um, anyway, yes, uh, one of her, it's actually her, her body brain, as she calls it, the, the physical one that uh, traveled through and is now basically residing in the demon lord's brain and attacking the demon lord. Okay, okay. Yeah, so Kumiko you know, gains the two back, and then they attack, and they kill Mother, and Mother's dead. And then um, it's Shun time. Okay, uh, so we're back, back to, to the future. Yep, back to the future. <laughs> we're back to Shun, uh, and it's time for our 15-year high school reunion. Oh, boy. Because uh, they've finally arrived at the elf village that uh, Sensei has been taking them to, um, because their teacher was born as an elf in this new world. Um, and it turns out like her father, I think we already knew this. Her father is the elf King who we had seen in the previous episode as well. Right. Um, anyway, and, uh, we find out that, uh, their teacher sensei has, uh, I forget her actual name. It's actually, Boom. it doesn't actually matter. I'm not going to look it up. I'm just going to call her sensei because that's what they call her mostly. There you go. Um, Oh, I should. You know what bothers me that I've been reading the light novel a lot lately, and uh, and I know they say it a lot in the light novel, and they call her something short, shorter than her real name, Shorty. No, I mean it's a shortened form of her real name, and she gets she gets annoyed by them that they're like, she says, "Oh, you shouldn't make up nicknames for your teacher or something mm. like that." Um, I don't know. It's like Yuki Nada Sensei or something like that, and they mm. call her Yuki or something. I don't think that's it, but it's something like that. It doesn't okay. matter. Sensei, we'll call her. She probably cut all of that out. <laughs> <laughs> I got really sidetracked there for a second for no reason. Um, anyway, so the, yeah, they finally reached the elf village and they're reunited with all of the other uh, students that Sensei has gathered over the years. So Sensei has been like, we knew that she knew where all the other students were, but we didn't necessarily know that she had actually gathered them all. But 
yeah, she's basically gathered all of the other students from the class and they're living in this house outside the elf village. Um, this is from the class in the future. No, from, oh. from the class in the other world before they died oh, I see. and were reincarnated. So everyone except Kumiko. Yeah, she hasn't gathered everyone because there's some that she has said are dead and oh, okay. some that she couldn't reach. Okay, um, there's some exceptions. One of them. Yeah, there's a few exceptions to it. I think she's gathered like 13 of them or something. Um, okay. Anyway, so, yeah, so they have like a little reunion where they're all like, oh, hey, I'm, you know, Shun, and this is uh, the, the girl who used to be a boy in the old world, but now she's a girl. Um, oh, and this dragon here, this is another of our classmates. Weird, right? <laughs> um, totally. Stuff like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, anyway, so, yeah, they, uh, they all get together, and uh, some of them are kind of talking trash about uh, Sensei, you know, not not all of them are happy to have been brought there and it's not immediately apparent what why but it turns out that um sensei and her father in this world the elf king uh had basically just gone around and her father's like high enough level magic user he could sort of appraise and he could see that little thing that says that they're a reincarnation and somehow even though she was a baby she was able to communicate with him and tell him about the reincarnations because he basically goes around and just kidnaps all of these kids. So, oh, wow. And so he was the one that was sort of behind the attacks on uh, Sophia's carriage, the vampire baby. Yeah. Remember this? Yeah. So those people that were attacking that were attacking on his behalf, like he was in charge of it. Okay. Um, Not to hurt her, but just to kidnap. Apparently now, yes. We okay. didn't know that at the time, but now we know that that is, that is what they were probably trying to do, was they were trying to... Uh, kidnap uh, baby Sophie or Sophia. Is it Sophie or Sophia? One of those. Um, they were trying to kidnap the vampire baby because she was a reincarnation. So, yeah. And, uh, yeah, then, and then we go back and we see Kumiko again. And uh, she senses once again that the demon lord is now heading her way because I guess the demon lord sensed that mother was now dead. She lost that connection. And sort of immediately figured out, well, Kumiko must be there, so I'm going to head back that way. Okay. Um, I don't know why Kumiko can teleport and the Demon King can't, or the Demon Lord can't, um, but apparently that's the case. Anyway, so, yeah, so. Kumiko senses it, and then the episode just sort of ends. Like, uh, So we might, get the, we might get the Demon Lord Kumiko showdown uh, coming up. Mm. Sounds like a soon. cliffhanger. Yeah, sort of. Mm. Yeah. Okay. It's anyway. like a jam-packed episode. There was quite a bit in it because, like, the human stuff wasn't super boring or anything, so uh, it was worth mentioning, I guess. But, yeah, I mean, I've got a fair amount, half a page, I guess, of notes on it. So, yeah. Nice. Um, pretty good. Um, as I said, I have been reading the light novel. I am not actually even caught up to this point. I'm probably about halfway through volume two. Mm. Um, I forget how many chapters. Chapters are weird in this, like the numbering of it. Because there's, I think there's technically like 16 chapters in the first volume, but there's so many of these like Shun chapters that are sort of thrown in and then mini chapters and stuff like that. Mm. I think the actual count was 24, 24 chapters um, in, the, uh, in the first volume. And then I don't know exactly where I am in the second volume. I don't, I don't even remember, but okay. I'm, uh, I mean, Kumiko is still in the, in the cave. Uh, or in the Elro Labyrinth. Um, she's working her way through the, the middle stratum of the Elro Labyrinth, uh, for those that have watched it. And remember that, you'll know where I am. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm going to keep reading it. I'm going to just, I don't know, I don't know what volume this current timeline uh, that we're watching is even in. So I'm just going to keep reading until I catch up and, and then I'll see if I can apply the brakes. Yeah. Probably not, but probably not. It's my, <laughs> but from but, my from my past experience with such things. But I don't know. I mean, I might not even catch up before the end of this season. That's honestly. true. So I mean, we've, we're already at. Uh, wait, what are we at? This is episode nineteen, and there's mm. twenty four total. So there's only five more. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe not. Depending on how fast I read, I guess. Mm. Uh, but yeah, that is. So I'm a spider. So what? And uh, yeah, I'm still enjoying it quite a lot. Um, as you can probably guess by the fact that I've gone and started reading the light novels. Yeah. Um, but then the next up, we have the other uh, Friday show that we watch, those Snow White Notes. That's right. 
the uh, Shamasen show. The Shamasen players, and we're both watching, I think, still. Um, this one, so I mean, they're they're at this competition to do this, to do their group uh, performance. And Tournament arc. They are Continues. scheduled last, uh, very conveniently. Uh, so last, uh, not this episode, but the week before, they had arrived there, and so you know, kind of, it's like, okay, here we go. Uh, and then this one, they're still waiting, um, but I kind of, I like this episode. I, I didn't love it, but I, for anyone that's been following along, I, I'm rooting for this show. I, I really want it to succeed, um, and it's, it's keeping me, keeping me going without, you know, really blowing me away, but. I, I feel like it's, this episode particularly, is really trying to get the feels right yes like it's 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 sort of poking at him and it, it nearly got me a couple times not, not not like super strong but it you know a little yeah. bit a little bit i agree um yeah it was like starting to finally like you know at least try to blossom with that with that aspect yeah um and so we learned a little we learned mo more about yui who is uh i wrote down her name that's how much shot. we learned uh but she's the one with the glasses that is sort of a secondary character and she only joined the um shamisen club to support her friend um who is a uh, shuri mm. um and so they that was kind of the crux of this episode where you, shuri shuri was like in her head about the performance and then mm. she realized that she had not considered yui's feelings and so and she noticed that yui was like probably holding you know her emotions in and then there's a part where Yui was like, well, after this, I'm done. I'm quitting the, uh, the Shamasen Club. Yeah, I just did it so we could get into the competition, is yeah. what she says, right? And, I mean, which I think was good for the, the drama, uh, melodrama, really, um, because it sort of sparked in uh, Shuri's mind, like, uh, you know, like, oh, you know. First of all, I thought it was kind of messed up for her to, uh, I mean, it's good story-wise, but, like, messed up for her to, tell that to her you know tell that to shirty like right before they're about to perform yeah it's like well that's not helping anything <laughs> yeah um but then a little later on uh shirty's kind of thought about it and she um she kind of blows up on um yui uh, yui yeah. for like not for holding her emotions in and then so mm. she kind of like pushes her to to explode with you know everything that's on her mind and um and I forget specifically, like she's she was angry at herself for, um, I don't know, for not taking it seriously enough, or for not, I, I don't know, I, I can't remember exactly how, uh, what she expressed during that, but uh, yeah. we we learned we learned a bit more about her, <laughs> and it cut back to like her childhood and stuff, and how how the two of them met, um, they were real little, like on the playground, and mm. Shuri was like a new, you know, a new classmate and didn't have any friends, and she kind of reached out to her. Even though she's she was kinda, getting she was getting picked on a little bit too, yeah, right? getting teased, yeah, yeah and and she kind of, um, yeah, I mean, not like she just kind of like you know threw her bone essentially, and um, but wasn't necessarily like oh I'm your savior or you know I'm going to you know go above and beyond. She was just like hey, <laughs> like wanna sup wanna uh, eat lunch or whatever she said, yeah. Um, so that was that that was the most of the episode. Mm. Um. I still like the performances. I remember think the performances was kind of the rest of the episode, yeah. Yeah, and they kind of built up. We got to see um, Mai Mai, who is uh, Setsu's pseudo, or self-imposed, rather, uh, rival. Yeah, she's not Setsu's rival, but Re Setsu is her rival. Yes, that's true. Guess, that's true. However that works. Yeah. I mean, either way, she's uh, she's pulling. And what's kind of funny, too, because they, they've done this whole gag, which which I like, of her, like, uh, of of Mai Mai like trying to uh, make you know make a stand against Setsu like mm -hmm. alert him to her presence and like you know call him out be like this you know this is this is on this is a competition you know this is personal um, but she she keeps getting thwarted in that like she turns mm -hmm. to go talk to him and he's gone or she walks in the room yeah, and they're yeah, all yeah. like striking poses uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and she's like awkward um, but yeah I. She's kind of growing on me. I, I the more I learn about her, I like her. Like, mm. um, she's she's really she's annoying but still likable. Yeah, which is it's a tough combo to pull off. I think. I think so too. Yeah, like you can tell how earnest she is, but yeah. she's just yeah. so like maybe immature or just 
so energetic about you know how yeah. she feels that she yeah is kind of uh kind of annoying like you said but it, it's endearing i can i can get with it and i i said last week because i was looking it out but there you know it's like 27 uh volumes of this manga that mm. it's based on so i'm like mm-hmm. All right, like I'm, I'm, I'm settling in. I'm, I'm hoping that there, there's more seasons to come, um, and I'm hoping it continues to. I mean, maybe it's just a slow burn, starts kind of, you know. Uh, it seems like yeah, it's starting to mm-hmm. a little bit, yeah. Sort of, it's, uh, it's built up everything, and now it's ready to start sort of releasing some of the, the built up, uh, tension that it has. Yeah. Yeah. Because they spent so much time investing in Setsu and what was going on with him. Um, yeah. But I and, think... I mean, there was a decent amount of development on the other characters as well, or a moderate amount. I don't know that it was decent. It was probably a little below what I would have liked. But, you know, they they invested enough in those characters that we at least care a little bit. And yeah. then as they're starting to sort of release this uh, this drama feels stuff that they got going on, um, we care just enough that when that happens, we care more, right? So yeah. they're, they're they're building upon the base that they've set. The base was pretty unstable, I yeah, think, yeah. overall. But or they just, seem to be or building just thin. Like, yeah, it wasn't a lot to go off of. Yeah, but they seem to be building upon it well, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I agree, and it's it's a, it's definitely a slow burn. But uh, yeah, I'm in, I'm enjoying it. Seems like uh, you weren't too sour on this one. Yeah, I I, I mean the the most most of it prior to the performance section um the the actual drama the yeah. actual story stuff um i yeah enjoyed more than i think any other episode so far mm. of this show oh, nice. so uh yeah so i'm in, i'm enjoying it as well on the performance part of it i uh, i think i because there was a pretty large segment of this that was just performances of the different groups and stuff yeah and i think i've nailed down exactly what it is about that that i don't like Mm. um so i have to sort of compare it to like a uh, a food or cooking anime um which we have sort of done in the past where you know their reaction to the thing is is interesting and and the difference here i think is that in in those cooking animes like i i think of uh yakitate which is one that i watched a long time ago most people are going to think of uh food wars food wars Mm -hmm. sorry i only remember is soma that's his name but i can't think of it (laughs) even the japanese title anyway so in in those we have these people that are reacting to this food that we can't taste Mm. and so their reactions are sort of us being able to sort of taste the food um uh, what's the word for that? Um, through someone else. Yeah, vicariously. Um, vicariously. Like, that's yeah. the word I was trying to think of. Yeah, so we're sort of tasting that food vicariously through their description of the effect that it has on them. Mm. But we can't taste the food ourselves. Yes. Whereas with this, we can hear the music. Yeah, yeah. And so if if we don't have the same reaction to hearing the music that they have... Mm-hmm. Doesn't that just indicate that there's something wrong with us, that we're not listening to the music right? And so why would I want to watch a show that's basically telling me that my ears are broken every week, right? <laughs> like it just, it, it feels wrong. It's like, oh, this is like, we're flying through the air and then we dive down into lotus petals and, you know, like, yeah. but I can hear the music. So I have my that's own true. reaction to it. That's true. And them describing it doesn't draw me into that reaction. Whereas with the food thing, I can't taste the food. So them describing how the food makes them feel mm is believable i can buy yeah. into that and you kind of you know? need it to to you know get invested in yeah you know, for in what's, sure what's happening and so you know. i think i think that's the difference that's the disconnect mm-hmm. that's the problem i have with this whole reaction to the music thing is that i don't feel that way when i hear that music like i i like it i actually enjoyed the performances listening to them yeah but all of the all of the reaction stuff that they have um and how it makes them feel I mean, maybe, maybe I guess I'm supposed to be invested enough that I care about how they feel about the music, but, mm. but I don't. So uh, failure on the show's part to make me invested enough in it to care about that or just a, a poor concept in the first place. Now, the difference is this is from a manga, though, yeah, right? Yeah, I was going to say that. All right, yeah. So in the manga, totally makes sense because I can't hear the music and them yeah. describing it. I could probably get on board with that, yeah. but it just doesn't work in the anime. I'm sort of I totally hear you. I'm I'm sort of mixed on the reactions. Like some of them I like I can accept and like okay, I get that. And then others I'm like I don't 
you know, I'm no shamisen expert. And so it's like, yeah. um, but I feel like in general, especially when these performances, you're seeing the audience and are cutting to different characters, some who are new and some that we already know, like their teacher and, um, you know, kind of, um, and they're mentor all and stuff. like completely inspired and taken aback by the sounds that they hear. That's true. But it might, it reminds me, but they all don't, they, they all seem to have like a slightly different take on it too. I mean, some of them are, are in line with each other, but I, I appreciate that where it's not like, you know, cause it, what, when you were describing it, I thought you were getting, before you brought up food shows, I thought you were going to bring up like, um, like the shonen battle trope of mm. like, there'll be this epic battle going on, which we can all see, we can see what's happening and see the moves they're making, but then you'll have people on the sideline being like, oh my God, they just did a, you know, whatever, I don't, you know, a triple flip with a backhand or I don't know. And, you, you know, you get all those reactions of like, ah, oh. Um, and so, and so that can, not in every shonen, of course, but there's certain ones and certain battles um, that are just kind of annoying because they just, they just layer that on so yeah, much. Yeah, we're talking like, about My Hero later and there's, you know. <laughs> yeah, my, my Hero, pretty yeah. sure like this, this, everything, right, we can get to it then, I guess. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so I feel like, I, I totally get what you're saying. Like, it's like you can hear the music. And I guess that's for me what I like the most and I focus on because I think when, they're, the peop when they're, people are actually playing and, and the, the songs, you know, the, the actual music we're hearing, um, mm. I just like. I don't know. Oh, like, I enjoy that too. I yeah. enjoy actually hearing the music. But mm. again, the reactions, the, the part where we go into like the mental state of the characters listening to the music, it doesn't work in this medium. Like, mm. it, it probably works very well in the manga. Yeah, because you can't. Yeah, because you can't hear. hear it, right? But now I can hear it, and it, yeah. it breaks it. It breaks that whole concept. You just mm. you can't do it. You have to adapt it differently or something. Like it's just they're doing it wrong. That's all I'm saying. But it's not all about the music. There's like the drama, the character drama and stuff, and that's good. Yeah. So it's it doesn't it doesn't bother me that much. It's just I've been saying for weeks now how it annoys me every time they do that. And yeah. I hadn't really been able to put it into words why. And, yeah, and, articulate it. And this is why I thought about it more. And, uh, and it's yeah, it's a solid argument. Um, I cannot cannot disagree with it. I guess I'm just not as, as bothered by it um, because I I guess I just focus more on the music. But there are times when like yeah, someone has some reaction. I mean, it's, e like, it's even okay. worse when like their reactions are interrupting the music. I'd yeah. rather to just no, listen agree. to the damn music, to be honest with you. No, I agree. I agree. Or at least wait till after and you can have all your, your yeah. thoughts on it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And maybe, I mean, certainly this part of the season we're in, it's a competition, mm. a little arc or whatever. So we're getting a lot of performances and therefore mm -hmm. getting a lot of reactions to those performances. So it's yeah. kind of really, it's the thickest it's ever been yeah. uh, so far. Which I think is why I was able to sort of figure it out mm -hmm. in like the latter half of this episode, which is almost <laughs> all performance. So. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I just, while listening to the music, I was thinking about it and being like, oh, you know what? That's why. I mm -hmm. figured it out. Um, anyway, that's probably enough about this show. Um, yeah. I had to, I had to, I have a half a page just talking about that subject that I just breached. So um, let's move on to something much shorter. Uh, Gloomy, the Naughty Grizzly. Um, don't run, run from bears. Reprise. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. It's like, didn't you already learn your lesson? Literally the first episode was uh, th the same title. This is like yep. second chapter of that same title, whatever. It was. I don't remember what the title of the episode was, but they share the same title. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So boy has to pee. Gloomy's laying on him, so he sort of pushes Gloomy off and then goes running to the bathroom so he doesn't pee his pants. Don't run from bears. He gets attacked. Some very important life bum, lessons. Bum, 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 bum. Don't have a bear as a pet, and then if you do, don't run from it. Yep. All right, let's move on then to, uh, oh, there's something else in the Shorts and ONA block this week, George. My God. That I didn't even tell you about. Um, so I just, I, I saw this online that there was this... Um, animated ONA thing that was going to be on YouTube on, uh, I forget what the YouTube channel was, but, uh, the Japanese title is Oihana Mitsuketa, or I found a blue feather would be my sort of translation of the title. Um, which I think is fairly accurate. Um, even though I'm not an expert in Japanese anyway, so get in the, the comments. This is the first episode of, uh, this show. And, uh, the plot goes something like this. A boy finds a blue feather. The boy wonders, what sort of bird has a blue feather like this? He goes and he shows it to his sister and he says, Hey sister, 
do you know what sort of bird this feather is from? She says, no, I don't know. And then a crow shows up and starts talking to them and says, well, you're never going to find what bird that blue feather came from. If you're on the ground, you have to take to the skies. And then the crow grows incredibly large and says, get on my back and we'll go searching for this blue feathered uh, bird. And so they climb onto his back and they fly into the sky and... Uh, that's uh, that's the episode. Oh, cliffhanger! Uh, and then the uh, during the end credits, they have the they show a bird and they play its actual call, the bird call, mm. and then they have a bunch of information about the bird and mm. stuff. Nice. Um, it is it is the reason I didn't even tell you about it is it's difficult to watch. It's not it's not properly subtitled in English. Mm. Um, it's not even properly subtitled in Japanese. So it's just using the uh, auto detect Japanese feature mm. on YouTube, and then I translate that to English and. I'm able to piece together uh, enough between the Japanese and the parts of the English subtitles that are correct um, to sort of get the gist of the story, especially with something this short. It's uh, I don't know, three, four minutes, I think. Oh, okay. Uh, pretty short. It was cute. It felt mm. a little kidsy, you know. Yeah. Um, Almost seems it seems like a uh, fairy tale, not the show, but like a yeah. fairy tale esque setup. Fairy T A L E, not T A I L, right? <laughs> Well, I mean, I mean, like an actual fairy tale, not the show. Yeah, that's why I said T A L E because the show is. Oh yeah, T A I L. Yes, yes, you're right. T A L E. <laughs> Sorry, you confused me. Spelling, um. <laughs> numbers, <laughs> magnets, how they work. You were drawing in the air, and I, <laughs> I was entranced. Oh, uh, but that um, does sound cute. I, I'm into birds. Yeah, but... it, it it was cute, and it was again kidsy because this crow shows up and just starts talking, and then it suddenly grows giant for no, like, unexplained, you know, just completely unexplained reason. Yeah. Just, and then, like, sure, Mr. Crow, we'll climb onto your back and fly off into oblivion with you, I guess. Uh, <laughs> it seems kind of creepy, like, this, <laughs> this, this crow or raven or whatever. I mean, mm. it's some sort of, uh, what's that group of birds called? That that type of bird group that crows and ravens and uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a new, there's a new Pokemon. Magpie. No, no, the new, so the new Pokemon that's, that's like a Raven type thing. Do you remember its name? Because I know you've played that oh, game. Oh, yeah, I, don't, I know, I know what you're referring to, core, but. Core, core, something. Yeah, I got nothing. But I, but I get what you mean. Corviknight, Corviknight. Oh, Corviknight, yep, yep, yep. And, and the, I don't know. Probably don't need to focus on that that much, but uh, Cor Corvus or something along those lines mm. is the name of the group that crows and ravens and a couple oh, other birds okay, belong okay. to. Those those blackbird type type things. Anyway, whatever. It it just seems like a child abductor. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Talked way too long about it because this is the O and A is in shorts block and it is a short O and A. Um, and uh, we should probably move on to Saturday episodes, which are now included in this episode of uh, of the show bonus um, because there won't be an episode coming out on friday we're covering it right now get on board get in the chopper giddy up uh so that brings us to my hero academia yeah uh popular show and, oh yeah i had uh, a thing i needed to say george was right Oh, snap. Oh, yes, yes. Yes. My prediction was correct. Your prediction was correct. Yes. That uh, it would be really funny if the next battle just took like five minutes. And it wasn't five minutes. It was half the episode. Yeah. But I still got to give you credit. That was, that was, that was a good call. Um, <laughs> Thank I you. Was, I was really happy when it, it, it came true. Oh, I me was, too. I was expecting this one because Baku goes in and I was expecting them to draw it out and make mm -hmm. it more, you know. Even really. halfway through the fight, I was like... Because I was like, maybe? And then uh, and then things started to go awry for them. And I was like, oh, God. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Well, but yeah, they did some, it. They got to have some tension in there. So That's true. But yeah, basically half the episode was uh, the, the Bakugo group's fight against the Class B group. Um, yeah. And um, uh, it was Bakugo with uh, his team, uh, but Jiro is part of that team. And uh, I just wanted to give her a shout out. She's the headphone jack girl. Oh, yeah. Ears girl. Yeah. and Don't uh, call me ears. She kept saying, <laughs> yeah. as I recall. And, uh, uh, I like, and she's probably my, one of my favorites of Class A. So grape sure. juice too, right? Um, was he in this one? Wasn't he in this one? No, he's, he's with, uh, I think he's, I oh, think he's, he's in the last one with, um, he's with Uraka Deku? and oh, Deku. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I just remember he was sort of featured in this episode. I couldn't remember if it was in the first half or the second half, I guess. Mm, yeah. Um, but yeah. 
Wait, who else is in the group? Oh, there's the that one guy. The guy that shoots glue or something? Or I don't know what he shoots. Well, the glue guy, that was a class B guy, right? Glue guy? Oh, was it? Yeah, glue guy's a class B guy. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's the it's the guy that shoots the the uh ribbons or the Oh yeah, tape. Tape yeah, tape, tape arm tape. guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, tape arm guy. So tape That's arm right. guy. Um Wow, it's almost like we didn't watch this episode. I can't even remember. Uh, well, I mean, not that not well, that any of them were that important. Yeah. It was all really Bakugo centric, yeah, right? They yeah. Were, they were just very supporting. Of course, uh, I like Jiro, and and she got you know she had a bit of you know interplay yeah. with that, but yeah. but yeah, it was definitely a arms, Bakugo. Tape arms did too. And, yeah. Uh, and I don't remember at all who the last one was. Oh, whatever. But, uh, Get in the comments. I could I could look through this list of every character that uh, is in My Hero Academia and eventually no, find it. We don't have time for that. I'm not going to do that. Um, so I, I was my prediction was right in general, but I was wrong because I I thought it'd be funny if I mean obviously, but I thought it'd be great if they if they the match was over very quickly and they played it for laughs. Uh, but they didn't do that. The match was over quickly, and they they uh, they gave like a satisfying payoff for Bakugo. I thought, um, yeah. which was um, just really him just working with his teammates and like for once not being a complete dick. Yeah, so it was like not being a complete dick. a complete dick. Yeah. Yes, he was yeah. still a dick. Yeah, <laughs> he still had to like have his uh, his one liners and you know scoff and yeah. Do and all and that, I but... mean, he he essentially dictated the whole thing that was going on, but he. Rather than just doing everything himself, he at least told them what to do to help him achieve victory. I guess. Yeah, you know? and he and they they slowly revealed his plan as the match was going on, which I thought was done well. Like, and it, it, all in all, he he told them uh, essentially, like you know, if if you guys are you know in danger, I'll I'll protect you, mm. and vice versa. Like, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to just end this. Um, and with your guys' support, but, uh, but if things go awry, like, let's just help each other out, which is very nice. Uh, it was heartfelt. I, I, I literally brought it. It sounds very nice and heartfelt until you consider how he says it. Oh, see you, uh, kick your yeah. ass. Yeah. Anyway. But they're all used to that. Yeah. I guess that's true. <laughs> As are we. If he's your friend, you're going to get used to it, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Um, definitely the loudest, uh, class A member. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I enjoyed that, and and uh, yeah, I, the only note I have on the fight is Bakugo is gonna Bakugo. Yeah, you know, pretty much. That's what he does. Yeah, he just he just basically like, and he definitely he shows definitely shows that like he has better sta stamina than he had mm. in. I don't even remember the last fight we saw. Yeah, him well, in, even but... like his arm things get destroyed, and he's. I mean, I guess those were to help him like shoot bombs or whatever. But mm. he's still able to sort of shoot the fire to fly thing. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's interesting. He was able to uh, give give them all bombs in the beginning, which is which oh, yeah, is a good right. clever yeah. clever move. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and and it was literally wrapped up by the uh the midway point. <laughs> the mid the mid break where there would have been a commercial if we were watching it on TV. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so it was nice, and then the second half, um, they which was was great too. Bon I literally wrote bonus points. They just they reflect on the fight. Oh, I'm sorry, he had something. I was I was gonna just say that instead of actually getting into the next battle, um, since they've you know so, so succinctly wrapped up this battle in half an episode, they could have just you know gotten to the next battle. But no, they spend this whole second half of the episode you know reflecting and then talking about the next battle and strategizing yeah. and stuff like that. So. I was just sort of hoping that we'd get like a half an episode into the next battle, which is no doubt going to last like five episodes. So yeah, but this is this is it. This is the one we've been waiting for. So yeah, I I don't know if your other prediction about this fight getting interrupted is going to happen or not, though. Oh, maybe not. But it's like I don't know. The show early on, the show was so good about um, having these sort of uh, left turns, you know, like unexpectedly. Yeah. So maybe they won't do that. But clearly something there's some something is gonna, is going to happen between Shinso and 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 uh, they've defi definitely set it up that way yes. yeah and and it's going to hopefully continue this whole um, um vestige thing that's been set up and yes so Which would be nice to get back into i guess yeah, yeah that was they um reintroduced that in the you know first episode the first real episode of the season so it's like yeah like, oh yeah so i guess to it they, they do talk about this when they're sort of recapping and rehashing stuff. Um, they do talk about the score, class A versus class B, because there was a tie. And prior to that, each class had one. And so now class A has won another one. And there was a so draw. The, 
Yeah, that's which what is I said. Moot. Yeah. yeah, the tie. Okay. Oh, um, yes, yes, yes. So this fifth battle, um, if Class A wins, whatever they were winning anyway, doesn't matter. If Class B wins, they can tie it up. Yeah. So they can like, no longer win. That's probably the more interesting route to take as far as story goes is for them to, uh, for Class B to win, which probably means, yeah, something pretty serious is going to happen with uh, Deku mm. um, versus Shinso. So, yeah. And I'm just hoping it doesn't take five episodes, um, four episodes, three episodes, two episodes. Um, it can take however long it wants, as long as it's, no, in my no, mind. No, it can't. <laughs> <laughs> but as long as it's doing something interesting with it and furthering the plot, like, that's mm. what I, because I feel like. I guess that's true. If there was like, if, if, if there was some break in the action where we're sort of like inside Deku's mind with the vestiges or something like that. Yeah. I could see that, that extending yeah. it. But I mean, actual fighting. If it's really just people punching each other for five episodes, I will. I mean, I'm I'm on the verge of dropping this show. Honestly, oh, wow. I really am. I'm, I'm really sick of this season. Mm. Um, and I wasn't really into the latter part of last season either. So I don't know. Like I still enjoy it somewhat, but it's so little. It's like a little like sliver of what I care about in in an episode. You know. Yeah. Anyway, all right. You just continue with your um your praise of the second half of the episode if you want. <laughs> uh, not that it was you know fantastic or anything. I just I enjoyed it because like we said, they reflect on the on the battle that just happened, which has been the case up until now. They reflect on the battle and then and then they get ready for the next one. Uh, but I just appreciated that you know they got all that. They were able to end this battle, the fourth match, and set up the fifth one. So it's like you know the next episode we're right we're right into it. Um, there's no uh, no lollygagging or um or set up or anything so one can hope yeah one can hope um but I, i'm with you i mean i'm not on ver the verge of dropping it i feel like at this point i'm just invested and it's so popular that uh i gotta see where it goes so it would really have to uh um i mean if anything i would start reading the manga um and i've yeah. thought about that before so if you dropped it I, that's probably what i would do because mm. then um, I mean, I might start reading the manga and I'll just skip all the crap that I don't care about until I get to the interesting part. So, yeah. you know, skip the next 13 chapters probably. And uh, I don't know. Well, I feel confident that this, I mean, we've talked about this before, but that this show is suffering from what a lot of shonen um, at manga adaptations do, where it's like they're starting to catch up and, and you can I just don't... feel it. Like if you watch the first two seasons of My Hero, like the pacing is really nice. Like things move along. Yeah. Um, at a very satisfying um, speed, but now it's like things. And I had this issue with One Piece, although it didn't start affecting me until like episode five hundred and something. Um, so pretty early on, with like you know getting up to a hundred episodes uh, with my hero. But I just feel it like they're just they're just stretching it out because it's popular, and they don't want to catch up and mm -hmm. have like an Attack on Titan situation where they have to wait like two years or whatever to. Uh, I mean, I have, I have less faith than you do in that. I feel like the manga probably at this part is probably stretched too. Like they're just filling it. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. I haven't read the manga. Um, that would be an interesting thing to do like as a project is yeah. pages per episode, mm, right? Yeah. So how many pages was this episode? Like you can like graph it along, you know, for each four. This was four pages in this episode, maybe. Yeah. Whereas if you go back to like the first season, that first episode of the first season probably 10 to 20 pages honestly yeah, right yeah, yeah i think so 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 yeah it would be interesting to look at that graph and just see how terrible this show has become in actuality in a in a very non subjective way very yeah. objective way of saying how bad this show just is look now. at the numbers <laughs> <laughs> well fair enough well uh i would actually really like to read I'll, I'll get to, i'll get to work on that i'll uh, <laughs> i'll work up a spreadsheet and i'll uh, have nice. it printed out next week probably excellent well <laughs> And while we wait for that, why don't we talk about the next show? I've been killing slimes for 300 years, and I maxed out my level. You must be tired. That's a lot of slimes. Accidentally, in, uh, in parentheses, because that's in the Japanese title, but it's not in the uh, English title. Mm, I see. Yeah. It's not as uh, snappy. Yeah. She, she accidentally maxed out her level. She wasn't doing it on purpose. She just, you know, was killing slimes. You know, they're slimes, whatever. Anyway, okay, I've been killing slimes for 300 years, yada, 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 yada. Um, so uh, last time we left off, it was sort of a cliffhanger. Um, 
Harkara had accidentally um, knocked out the the demon king, uh, okay. the lowly demon king, if you recall this. Um, yes, the, the, I do remember the so cute... fan service elf knocked out the the lolly demon. Okay, right? and they didn't realize at first that it was that, right, right. That they that didn't they the... didn't know that she was the the demon king or anything, okay. right? But uh, yeah, Halkara just being sort of clumsy and stuff accidentally knocks her out, and then all the demons like take her and put her in jail and say that they're going to execute her and stuff like that. And uh, so now Azusa has to basically come up with a plan. Um, and so she goes, she concocts this potion that's essentially something really sour tasting that she thinks if she, so the demon king is still unconscious, she thinks anyway, turns out not, but anyway. Um, so she concocts this potion that she's going to sort of pour in the demon king's mouth that's really sour and should cause the demon king to wake up, right? That's her plan. So she sneaks in there and she's about to pour it in there and uh, then the demon king is awake because she wasn't still knocked out anymore i guess and okay. uh and basically the demon king says oh well if you want to save your friend you have to beat me in a duel because you know demon king's gonna demon king i guess uh anyway <laughs> um and Hashtag. they do they do call this lowly the demon king by the way which a king is generally a title for males but she she is not she's just a, she's a lowly she's the, the ruler of the demons i guess might be a better term we're gender fluid in slime land okay yeah um i mean all the characters are female basically so oh, yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> so kings lords whatever they're all they're all females mm. um anyway so yeah so azusa says all right i guess and uh, and then she beats her in the duel because azusa is so super op um she's maxed out right yeah she is <laughs> max level um and then the the, the demon king says aha I tricked you. This whole thing was just a, a ruse to get you to beat me so that I could have someone uh, to sort of be a supplicant to, I guess. I don't know if that's the right word or not, mm. but like someone who's better than me because I spend all of my days with all of these people sort of, you know, worshiping me and sucking up to me. And I wanted someone to, mm. uh, yeah. to look up to myself. I see. Sen so, senpai. That was yeah, basically that was her whole. She actually calls her Onechan, I think. Um, okay. But, uh, yeah, that was that was the Demon King's whole thing. She just wanted like... someone to, or sorry, she calls her Onesama, but oh, okay. same thing basically, right? <laughs> well, Sama. Um, so. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, much more <laughs> respectful for sure. Um, anyway, uh, so then after that, it's time for the award that Azusa was promised um, for helping reunite the uh, or. To pat for patching the bad blood between the red dragon and blue dragon clans, she's getting a, a peace award. Okay. And the demon king decides, you know, um, our red dragon girl, whose name I probably wrote down, I hope I did, Lyca, yeah, Lyca, the red dragon girl. Uh, she decides Lyca is also going to get a, an award for, you know, helping to establish this this peace, this reconciliation between the tribes. And then she also decides that uh, the blue dragon girl whose name I did not write down, um, is going to get an award too. So they all get their awards, and then the Demon King's like, oh yeah, there's one more thing. Blue Dragon Girl, you have to let Azusa rub your horns, which is apparently a very, uh, it's not sexual. I know what you were thinking. It wasn't. Well, I mean, come on, rub a horn? I mean. But it is, it is very much a thing where like, um, you're, you're sort of, lowering yourself below that person i guess and, and apparently in the blue dragon culture um having someone rub your horns means that you're basically their servant for life or whatever. Uh, i see uh the demon king knows this azusa doesn't azusa's like okay i'll rub your horns she does and uh so now um the blue dragon girl uh is uh is part of the family, I guess, you know, because she's going to okay. just follow azusa everywhere <laughs> she goes because she is now Azusa is now her master, basically. Um, anyway, yeah. So, so sounds one like more... they need to take their dragon and go house hunting. <laughs> no, that would be really boring. <laughs> but they do need a bigger house per per my uh, account. Yeah, no, I I, th I think you're right. Actually, I think they are probably maxed out on occupancy. But I was paying more attention during the opening credits, and there's probably at least three more that we haven't seen yet. Oh wow. Um, <laughs> Yeah, two or, actually, I even have it in my notes. I think there's two or three more <laughs> that I've seen in the openings that we haven't seen yet. And we've got, what, five episodes left of this? So, yeah. 
they're probably going to have to expand the house or something. Well, I mean, Ghost Girl doesn't actually take up any space, but, you That's know, true. whatever. But hey, even she needs to, you know, have her privacy. So we've got, so we've got Azusa, the Witch of the Highlands, right? Mm -hmm. She's like the main one. And then we've got the two slime daughters. Yeah. Uh-huh. And we've got Laika, Red Dragon Girl, okay. um, who is sort of following Azusa. Um, and we added Ghost Girl. Oh, and we've got Halkira, the uh, um, fan service elf. Okay, yep. Um, the, the, the demon lord, uh, Beelzebub, she, she doesn't actually live at the house or anything. She, she just, just visits. She just visits a lot, right, right. Um, and we've got Ghost Girl, right? I didn't say Ghost Girl yet. And now, and now we've got Blue Dragon Girl. So okay. there's... There's like eight in the house now. Yeah, they're probably they're probably at capacity. Well, Damn. I mean, we're not counting Ghost Girl, so seven. Because <laughs> Ghost Girl doesn't take she, up any space, like I said. She still needs her own room, you know, have her privacy. And... I mean, she can she can literally go any. I don't think she needs to sleep or anything. No. And she can she's now free to basically go anywhere. So she can just sort of hang out outside, and I don't know. Whatever. You're I don't, a very rude host. I don't know that she needs her own room, and I don't know that any of them, except maybe Azusa, have their own room. Like the, really. the two slime girls probably share a room, and I'm assuming Halkara and uh, and Rosalie, the ghost girl, probably share a room. Which means, oh, Laika and Blue Dragon Girl are going to have to share a room. Wow. <laughs> but they were uh, just, uh, you know, got a peace prize. That's true, but they <laughs> there, there's still some uh, some tension between them, I guess, mm. you know, as uh, play, sort of play leaders for of the clan. Comedic effect at yeah. this point, I yeah. imagine. Yeah. Cool. Anyway, uh, it's cute, it's funny, it's enjoyable, and uh, hmm. yeah, I nice. like it. Yeah, sounds like a, yeah, just fun, funny show. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um. So I guess then we should talk about Shadow's House Episode 7 <laughs> is the last thing we have to talk about this episode. That's right. This is the end of the episode. We're nearing it. Holy cow. All right. Exciting. Very. Um, uh, so what do you got to say? You got anything? Yeah. This is Episode 7. Um, we're continuing with the Garden Labyrinth uh, as part of the uh, debut, which is more of a test, test yeah, yeah. of skill and wit and strength i suppose um yeah. and just you know i don't know so we, we got to see a little bit more of the masters which are the adult shadows yeah. family members uh, and they're in this room i have them as the elder shadows but that's, elder shadows. that's my own name for them so nice not accurate i like that the elder shadows um and I, they were they were teased at the end of last week's episode and it was like okay because it was you know first time we're seeing any uh, any adults um and it definitely see and it still seems this way but you know when they were first introduced it seemed like you know they're they're getting some sort of sick pleasure out of out of you know watching you know uh all these shadows members and their dolls kind of you know you know fail or mm, suffer. stumbling and fumbling and yeah yeah but in this one we get a little bit more like they're very like per my account they're very invested in this um there's people they they seem to be rooting for people they're mm. you know specifically hoping they fail yeah, i mean it's it's like the super bowl man They're watching yeah, the super. That's they, prob true. they probably have a pool going on <laughs> but i was i was very i was impressed by the notion that they knew all the dolls names and they know you know they knew you know that's true of course they know the shadows um members that makes sense to me but um i, I thought it was interesting that, that they showed enough care and interest to you know to know their names and like you know be following all of them and not just like focusing on uh on one or the other and, and i'm sure it's a you know a um uh, for the audience to a certain extent, but mm. um, it was interesting to see them a little more. But there's only like five shadows and five dolls, right? Is that? Is I think that so. Yeah. yeah, yeah, not too it's many. Like Ten, not a ton to remember, but yeah, sure. Yeah, it was like because I kind of thought you know there is sort of elite, um, and maybe you know they don't didn't care that much that they were just like mm. you know you know uh, getting pleasure out of out of just watching them being tormented, you know, instead of being like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, I specifically, I know who these uh, people are and, and I've been following them. And they seem, yeah. they seem to have like reports on each one of them and, yeah, that's true. and uh, knew, knew more than, than I thought they would have. Well, I will say that there's, there's this YouTube channel that I, I watch sometimes and as a sort of comedic uh, side thing, he had a uh, sort of a, 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 a smash up derby with matchbox cars. 
And I eventually learned all those matchbox, car, matchbox cars as sort of characters in this. Like he would just literally he had a ramp that he le would put them down and then they would all smash into each other and whichever ones fell out. And there was like points and I don't know. Anyway, but, you know, yeah, you 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 sort of invest yourself in it enough. You uh, yeah, it's like watching a sport or watching yeah. Yeah, any any sort of, you know. Yeah, um, and the, I mean, the matchbox thing is just like the, the least the thing that I could think of that was like. um the least inspiring thing where you'd be like, yeah, go ice cream truck or whatever. <laughs> well, I was, I, it reminds me of the marble racing. I, I got into that during the oh. pandemic. Um, oh, okay. Uh, a la John Oliver. Um, mm. If you saw that, but yeah, and I was rooting for certain marbles. <laughs> yeah. I, sort of the same thing, I guess. Yeah. Anyway. So yeah, these so, are, these are their marbles. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so there's that. And then uh, aside from that, um, I like this episode because uh, we get to see a little bit more of Emilico interacting with different um, mm. people, especially the other Shadows members. She comes across um, Patrick, who is like mm. in a box that just has like one like uh, air hole, air, on vent, the, yeah, yeah. air vent uh, on the top of the box. And <laughs> they just have a funny moment, a funny exchange where like clearly Emilico wants to um, break him out of the box yeah. um, just because she's sweet and sunshine. Know. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and he's like, I, I like their, their exchange because he essentially convinces her. Why not? Because he's waiting at first. He's like, you know, no, like, you know, you know, you're supposed to go save, you know, you're, you know, uh, Kate, you know, yeah. you're, you're, you're the person you're uh, responsible for. Um, but she's just so sweet and caring that he has to, you know, come out with the real truth of like, no, I want to, um, just, he has to convince her not to save him. Yes. Essentially. Yeah. yeah. And, and he finally gets to the, the kernel of the truth, I think, which is he wants his, uh, I forget the, the name of his doll, but he wants, you know, his doll to, uh, what is he? To He's save Patrick. Him. Um, cause there's John and Sean, John and Sean, those ones rhyme. Right? Yeah. But Patrick, I'm not sure of the other one. Yeah, you're I gonna... can, I can find it. I think. Yes. Well, why you look for second. that? Um, well, I guess I'll wait. <laughs> More editing. Ricky? Okay. That is a name of one of them. So I'll take it. Is that right, though? Yeah. I'll take it. Well, Patrick, Ricky, maybe. It, oh, yeah. Something yeah, there. Yeah. I hadn't thought of that. Because, I mean, dolls now. we've got. We've got Emilico. Um, I mean, Barbie, Edward, Adam, uh, Lou. Mm. Mia? I think, I'm I think not Ricky. sure about Mia. Ricky. It's got to be Ricky. I think That's you're the right only about other that. one. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, he, you know, he convinces her, um, cause she's not easily, you know, she's so like gung ho with like what she thinks is right, which is, you know, um, usually pretty solid as far as like right and wrong go. But, uh, but yeah, he, he convinces her like, okay, that's a fair point. And then she starts, <laughs> she starts sending down individual Dropping orange food, slices. Yeah. <laughs> and the first one, like he gets like juice on his face and like hits him in the head. Uh, but he starts eating them, and she sends, like, a flower down for him to look at. It's just very sweet. And then she, like, hugs the box, and, like, mm. he, he can tell what she's doing. And Yeah, there's, and... like, sort of a moment where he's putting his hand against mm. the side of the box, and, like, yeah. Yeah. It seems like they have a connection through the box somehow. Yeah. yeah. And something, like, when he put his hand out, like, she wasn't aware of that. He gave no, in, you know, indication that he was reciprocating it. Mm. But I, I like that exchange, because, like, clearly Emilico doesn't, not that she doesn't care, but she's, you know, she's just so pure and happy that she, yeah. you know, her, her pride is not really, um, on the line ever. Um, yeah, but he, sure. he, his is. And so he kind of silently uh, reciprocates, um, and kind of plays mm -hmm. into his character where it's, I don't know how, you know, important of a character he is, but I just like that little moment of, you know, uh, clearly showing, uh, their different personalities. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the orange slices were cute. Um, and then other than that, I mean, they, uh, Emilico and Sean, uh, Sean doll, John. and then, <laughs> and then there's the other, it's the three, which I, I had, I feel like I called this, uh, when they first were like cleaning together, you know, they became, you know, or they, they were, they were, um, they had to have night duty together. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember the other girl's name. Ram. Um, oh, what it? Is it Ram? 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 Oh, Ram. Ram. They call her Ram. Ram, I think. yeah, yeah, Ram. yeah, that's right. Um, and she's, she's the one that's kind of the silent type that like talks with her pinky less so now, but yeah, 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 that did. Yeah. She's coming, 
I guess similar to Kokomo and Super Co. She's yeah, coming out of her coming shell. out of her shell. Um, yeah. And so yeah, it was like a it was like a you know an, a sweet reunion of the those three, and then um, they find they uh, intercept Sean. Uh, they find him. He's just like hanging out in a tree, and uh, he's he's filthy. Uh, his clothes are filthy with soot. Oh yeah, that's uh, right. And in the previous episode, he had broken out of his box with you know just releasing a bunch of soot, using his soot magic powers or whatever. Right? Yeah. yeah. And he had found Kate, um, and he had like um, proposed to her. Yeah, <laughs> and then we learn, which was a funny exchange too. But then we learn in this episode that like he was just nervous and he didn't intend to do that. Um, but uh, so he was. It was kind of fun to see him like you know just freaking out about that. Where, whereas at the moment, in the moment of talking to Kate, he was you know seemed pretty sure of himself. But yeah, and and like we we like Sean too, so therefore we kind of like John by. Uh association yes i think yeah um i think john is more likable than sean really but uh i don't know like sean's kind of come around he was kind of, he was kind of a jerk at first yeah he was just kind of like not really i don't know it seems like emilico like, like kind when of they were... brought him out of his like funk like a little bit where yeah. he was he when was... they were on night duty he was just like Ugh, yeah this is stupid you're stupid why are you all sunshiny all the time Ugh. yeah yeah. But then similarly with uh, in this episode with John, uh, John is after they kind of, you know, they're talking about like cleaning his clothes and stuff because he's filthy and, and mm. you know, the your clothes have to be clean. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's like your doll's face has to be unscathed and mm -hmm. the shadows member clothes have to be clean. Yes. Which is OK. I, I can accept that. Gotta have rules. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, but the rules that they did not know about at the start, which is, you know, a bit insidious, I suppose. But. Um, but well, the, the dolls were told about it, but the uh, yeah, the but not till they got not. to the the labyrinth, yeah. Oh right, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. Anyway, so after after all that, they're talking about the clothes and stuff and what they could do with that. Um, John is he's talking to Emilico and he's kind of just like analyzing her and and he it seemed like you know like most people he was annoyed by her sunshininess, um, but then he because I think because of his connection with Kate now and his interest in her. Mm. He, he, you know, in the moment, uh, sort of, uh, sees, sees Emilia Co in a, in a better light, you know, in a more, mm. you know, and he kind of like, it's like, oh, there must be something to this, this, uh, you know, um, demeanor that you have something that relates to Kate. And right. so he, he's sort of, he's sort of complimenting Kate through Emilia Co basically yes. saying that, oh, if she has a doll like you, she must be really great. Yeah. Sort of. Right? Yeah. And so, and, and in the process kind of by extension, accepting her on a certain level of like yeah. you know i because that like when the uh when the debut first started like she was getting a lot of shit uh you know from mm. from all the other uh Everyone, shadows yeah. members yeah. yeah and dolls probably but uh so i like that it kind of that plus like emilico's uh interaction with patrick i thought really just sort of uh, gave a little more depth to these different shadows characters but then also you know to emilico because i said it before too like when the show first starts we're just in her world, you know, like yeah. we see Kate and stuff, but it's just like, oh, this is going to be a happy, fun show, you know, where she just cleans up soot. <laughs> um, but it was all in, you know, I believe now is all in service um, to cement her character. And now we're seeing her interact with other people and, mm. and it doesn't always go, you know, uh, uh, in a pleasant, you know, doesn't unfold pleasantly always, but she's steadfast. And I don't know. I, I like a character like that. This is very sweet, earnest and um, unbudgingly uh, so. But you know, she, you... she is sunshine. <laughs> she is. What What did you think of this um, episode? So the, I guess the only other thing I really had that was that. So the elder shadows, um, some of them I don't remember which ones for sure, but very early on in the show, say, "Oh, those are the two that are going to fail," or something like that. When uh, was it? Rum and uh, Emilico were traveling together, and they I were think saying so. those two had to. I were, think so. Were going yeah. to fail, like as if it was something that was sort of predetermined or something. Yeah. I don't know if they were just being negative or predictive or something like that. Um, one, or if it was already predetermined. So. And then Edward, and I think last week's episode made some comment uh, about, you know, how he doesn't like Kate and like is, you know, it seemed like he was confident that she would fail. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I wonder if it relates to that, if it's all just Kate and Emilico or if Rum and, um, and her, I forget the name of her shadow, but um yeah, I don't know. It's it's a good question, like, because it. De I agree with you. It definitely seems like there's something. I mean, of course, with this show, there's more going on, you know, than we know. 
uh, more to be revealed. But yeah, is it is it like a yeah predetermined thing? That's a good question. Shirley, you must remember oh. her name. <laughs> Don't call me Shirley. <laughs> no, her name's Shirley. <laughs> Okay, so Shirley and Rum, Shirley and Patrick Rum. and Ricky, Kate and Emilico, Sean and John. Is that like an alcohol reference? Like a Shirley Temple is a non-alcoholic uh, beverage. Rum mm -hmm. is oh. an alcoholic beverage. Oh, that's true. I'm trying to figure out like what that relation is there. They all have some sort of connection, I except Kate and Emilico. Yeah, like. Kate and Emilico is like, yeah, completely yeah. sort of separate. But yeah, I don't know. Um, sorry, you were saying something before I said Shirley. Oh, no, you're fine. I was just kind of... Uh, um, taking in what you said, like about, you know, about it being predetermined, like it's yeah. an interesting. It was, um, it was unclear. It was just the way that it said it sounded like it was almost, yeah. but I don't know if they were just being again, pessimistic or something like that. Like, oh, those two are definitely going to fail or uh, something. Or maybe going back to the sports analogy of like, they have seen, you know, hundreds of these debuts and they've mm. read, you know, they've read all the charts, you know, all the files on all these people and have just are just calling it maybe I don't know. yeah maybe it's you know in their pool they have those two have to fail so they're yeah. saying those two are gonna fail and yeah i don't know yeah and then it, later there's more of the stuff with the elder shadows where um two of them are sort of saying oh well if i were ricky i would do this oh mm. if i were her i would do this and i don't know they they seem like kind of jerks and then one of the other ones says yeah well you're not them because you suck <laughs> basically yeah yeah which i liked it was fun which is good yeah it shows that they're not all like you know you they're know. not all jerks like that yeah. yeah and they're not all like of one mind or like all agree you know so it's yeah you know, that's true something yeah. something will probably play out with them uh you know clashing or uh or them being divided over over the results of this debut or something i don't know like yeah yeah we've got we've got a while left i think is this one of the ones that's 24 i don't remember yeah i don't remember I hope so. I'm. I give this a strong seven. I uh, mm. I really like this episode. Yeah. Um, and so I'm. It's like one of those like it just keeps. Uh, I don't know, getting me uh, more invested and and interested in in what's going on. Yeah, it's not like super super high, superb, or anything like that. But it's it's really good. It's mm. it's good. Yeah. 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 I think I'm at a seven on this one too. Mm. Um. But anyway, I guess that probably does it for us. Um. If you have any comments related to anything that we've said uh, during this episode or any other episode, you can find us on all the social medias um, at Umlike Anime. That's U-M-L-I-K-E-A-N-I-M-E. -E. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, etc. You know all these things. I say it a thousand times. Um, oh, we got a new patron. Did you see that? We did? Yeah, my buddy. Blaine. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah so, so Blaine has, uh, has uh, patronized us. That cool. doesn't sound right, but... <laughs> Well, shout out um, to Blaine. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you so much for that. Uh, and yeah, if you uh, if you want to become a patron, we are on Patreon at patreon.com slash umlikeanime, same way I just spelled it a minute ago. Um, every little bit helps. Uh, I actually just set up a new goal. I was telling George earlier. Um, it's not really a goal as much as a, a benchmark. Um, we each spend about five hours a week uh, producing this podcast, um, which is... 10 hours a week total, and then over four weeks uh, per month, it would be about $290 if, uh, if we were getting paid the federal minimum wage, which is $7.25. I, I honestly can't even remember the last time I got paid that much or less. It's been since the early 2000s. Yeah. Crazy. It's almost as bad as wait staff wages. Yeah. I think, I think in a lot of states, like, well, the state that we're in, the minimum wage is nearly double the federal minimum wage. And I think wait staff wage is higher than the federal minimum wage in the state. Wow. Um, anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, this is kind of off topic. But uh, yeah, we are on Patreon. Um, our, our most immediate goal is if we get to $50 a month, we will start producing a video uh, of our podcasts. Um, we're considering doing like maybe a live stream of the, the video while we're recording. Um, can't necessarily vouch for, you know, the quality of the, the content that you will receive, but, uh, yeah, we've got, we've got Blaine. Uh, I assume, uh, our Albert is, uh, coming back at some point he has said, yes. which, which puts us, uh, what one fifth of the way to that goal. So really we just need, uh, uh, like four more. Am I doing that math right? I can't do math. Yeah. Eight more. Well, we're not getting paid, so we the math a, is going to be bad. We need a number more than what we currently have. Um, yeah. And then we can start, you know, producing more uh, 
more interesting content. We it, someone on YouTube asked if we streamed the content before we oh, released yeah. it and stuff like that. And I would love to do that. Um, it's just a matter of uh, getting the equipment together and stuff like that. And yeah, uh, yeah we've already invested a fair amount of our own money in this. And uh, I've talked mm -hmm. about this too long because I don't want to sound like I'm begging for money. But thank you so much for listening. Don't forget, we are doing two podcasts a week now. So there's the Wednesday episode. There's the Sunday episode. There is no Friday. Um, so we've uh, just sort of recombined them in a, in a way to, you know, cut it down to two episodes per week. Although this one is probably longer than our previous Wednesday episodes have been because they've been getting shorter and shorter. Um, and now they're even longer. And now they're longer again, but, but, you know, overall it's, it's the same number of hours every week. It's just maybe a little more difficult to listen to it in this long form. I don't know. Um, if there's only sp certain shows that you want to listen to on YouTube, I try and put the time codes, um, so that you can skip to whatever show you want to listen to. Um, I don't get them up immediately, but I try and get them up within a couple days of the, the episode's release. Uh, anyway, I've yammered on enough. I am Tony, the Yammering One, and this is my co-host and friend for life, Mr. George. I'm the Stammering One. Are you the sta I'm the Yammering One, you're the Stammering One? <laughs> yes. All right. That's what we're going to that's what we're going to do from now on. Um again, thanks and uh, and we'll see you in I think 4 days, right? Yes. Memorial Day weekend. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right smack dab in the middle of Memorial Day weekend. So we'll see you then. Some of the best shows in that episode. Mm. And this episode too. I just said some. Um, stop, stop putting down my spider shell. <laughs> I haven't seen it. I, I can't, I uh, can't really weigh in. It's the best show this season. <laughs> my two favorite shows of the season are in uh, Sunday's episode. I see. So this is where I'm kind of right. I, mean, I enjoy a lot of them too. Um, on on the next episode, but I, yeah, I love Spider very much. So yes. All right, yammering done. Goodbye. Thank you. Uh, bye.